The Walls of Paradise are one of the very first things we're introduced to in Attack on Titan. We were always told how important the walls were, but as the story progressed, we realized that not only were the walls important in humanity's continued survival, but also in the continued progression of the story. Like us, the people of Paradise were made to believe in the power of the Holy Walls, and there existed a cult-like church that worshipped these walls. However, the cult helped us realize that everything was not what it seemed to be, and quite early into the story, we learned that within these walls lived several 50 metered colossus titans. Naturally, these titans have always been crucial to the plot because they are necessary for the rumbling to take place. This raises the question, are these wall titans similar to the colossus titan wielded by Armin and Berthold? Why did they never try to escape the confines of the walls and how were they even created? This video seeks to answer all such questions, so rest assured. What are the Wall Titans? Why were they created? Before we jump into the Wall Titans, let's talk about the walls itself. From the beginning of the story, the walls were hailed as a creation and gift of God that protected humanity against the natural predators outside the walls. Within the capital city of the walls, a cult-like religious establishment existed with members who believed that the walls were sacred. They worshipped these walls and tried their level best to protect their sacred walls from impurities such as humans and wall-mounted artillery geared towards violent acts. The members Members within the cult were known as the Wallists, with Pastor Nick being its most notable member. While the pastor staunchly professed to the people that the walls were a gift from God, he knew certain secrets about the walls that he seemingly could never reveal. Many of these Wallists, who knew the secret behind the creation and composition of the walls, would rather die from being tortured than reveal those secrets. The organization also revolved around the royal government, which is why the military police was sent after Pastor Nick after he began to work alone alongside the survey course during the uprising arc. At this point in the story, the military police mainly operated as the dogs of the throne, unlike the survey corps who were operating as a form of opposition in this arc. While some of the members of the royal family, most particularly the monarchs who held the founding titan, knew the truth behind the walls, they were in a situation that prevented them from revealing anything. Meanwhile, the populace within the walls was made to believe that Wall Maria, Wall Rose, and Wall Sheena were mighty, impenetrable walls made of brick and mortar. Sometime during the end of the first season, Aaron's attack Titan and Annie's female Titan fought violently in Stohes district with a climax of the fight taking place near Walshina and the church. As Aaron gained the edge over Annie, the latter decided to escape as she had promised her adoptive father that she would not die and return home to him no matter what. Naturally, she tried to do so by climbing over the walls in her Titan form. Annie used selective hardening to strengthen her fingers and then used the acquired power to create dents in the walls so that she could climb over them while having a good grip. Unfortunately for her, she could not escape as Mikasa cut off her fingers, pushing Annie down to the ground. Although Annie's plan failed, her attempt weakened certain sections of the walls where she had created her dents to gain a grip. Not long after, Mikasa witnessed some mortar from one of those indented parts fall off, which exposed the insides of the walls to her. What she saw then was a colossus or colossal titan residing within the wall in a sleep-like state. While this happened in the manga, in the anime we saw something similar, but the only difference was in fact that Mikasa was not the first person to see it. Later, Hanj analyzed the composition of the hardened mineral that created the walls in Annie's crystallized shell, which allowed him to conclude that both had a similar composition. A few seasons down the line, we learned how the walls were created and why there was a colossal titan within it. Long ago, prior to the creation of the walls, the Eldians ruled over the world with an iron fist, using the power of the titans to conquer lands outside their territory. Their tyranny created several victims who went on to resent Eldia, and rightfully so. Because the rest of the world had not developed the necessary technology to combat the power of the titans, Eldia could not fall unless an inside job was involved. As the Great Titan War began, the Eldian noble houses began to fight one another, which began to shake the base of the empire. The ruling king who held the founding titan back then was Karl Fritz, who was a pacifist. So much so that his heart hurt for the crimes of his ancestors against the people of the world, especially Marley. He believed that any retribution that came for the Eldians from the opposite sides should be accepted due to the gravity of their sins. However, he also did not want his people to randomly stop existing. Karl Fritz conspired with the Eldian noble Willy Tiber and created the story of a false Marleyan hero called Elos, who seemingly freed Marley and the world from Eldian tyranny. Meanwhile, Fritz relocated to Paradise Island with a royal family and most of the Eldians and used the powers of the founder to wipe out his people's memories of the outside world. Being the founding titan meant that he had access to the powers of founder 
Ymir, who used to create the Titan bodies from scratch into Path's realm and give them their abilities. Using these powers, Carl Fritz created several hundred thousand colossal titans about 50 meters in height and hardened their bodies to create the Great Walls of Paradise. These walls were made by Carl Fritz for two reasons, to prevent the people of Paradise from venturing out and to protect them from external attacks from resentful countries who wish to retaliate. Marley was creating pure titans using the remaining Eldians who were confined to their internment zone and sending them outside the walls. When Carl Fritz left all the titan shifters with Marley except the founding titan, he also issued an ultimatum that if Marley were ever to attack Paradise, the power of the founder would be used to unharden the walls and release the Colossus Titans into the wild, who would subsequently cause the rumbling and commit global genocide. In reality, however, Carl Fritz only used this as a deterrent and believed that his people should accept their deaths should a time of retribution come. This is the reason behind the future wielders of the founding Titan not being able to access Ymir Fritz's true power. People who used to want to use their abilities to protect the people from the threat of Titans would also fall victim to Carl Fritz's vow after becoming the founding Titan, which is why Yuri Rise, his father, and Frida Rise did not wish to help humanity after the fall of Shiganshina. Because the people living within the walls were robbed of their memories, they went on to believe that they were what remained of humanity as everything else had been annihilated by the pure Titans, who were considered to be a natural phenomenon meant to neutralize mankind. This also made it easy for them to believe that the walls were God's sacred gift to humanity as a means of protection against the Titans, which is why most people never questioned the Church of the Walls and its teachings. At the same time, Marley decided to do away with a pact they had made with Paradis and Carl Fritz, resulting in the initiation of the Paradis Island operation. In this operation, Eldians from Marley's internment zone, who were trained to become Titan-wielding warriors, were sent to Paradis to breach the walls and reclaim the founder to prevent any chances of the rumbling. This would make Marley the top dog country in the world who would have nothing to fear. Were the Wall Titans alive all this time? Why were they kept away from sunlight? The Wall Titans were very much alive, but they were in a state of stasis much like Annie within her crystallized shell. Had they been intelligent like Titan shifters, they would probably be aware of the fact that they were within the walls. To top that off, Carl Fritz probably created them to remain in this stasis-like state since he had complete control over the power of the Titans as the wielder of the founding Titan. This means that the Wall Titans are the oldest Titans in this story. Every shifter we see has changed hosts every 13 years, and most of the pure titans were created after Marley gained a substantial Eldian population in their internment zone, as it was their rebellious act against Marleyan oppression that led to their punishment and transformation into pure titans. It has been mentioned in the story that titans who are not shifters became inactive during the absence of sunlight. We witnessed this with Sonny and Bean, the two pure titans Hanj was monitoring, becoming inactive post-sunset. This is also why the battle at Udgard Castle was so unusual as no one expected a titan attack at night. It is later revealed that the pure titans were able to move that night since it was a full moon so they had access to the sunlight being reflected by the full moon. The wall titans however are perpetually in the dark. They cannot see sunlight or moonlight because they are concealed within their hardening. They are alive and can become active if they come to the light but with the cards that have been dealt to them they are always in a state of inactivity. Being away from sunlight also meant that they could not operate on their own in the absence of a coordinate who had control over Ymir's powers. Had they gained access to sunlight and become active, they might have tried to break out and feed on humans like the average pure titan since all titans are looking to feed on a titan shifting human so they can become human again. This is why Pastor Nick asked the survey course to hurry after the wall titan's face was revealed as he told them to not let the sunlight hit it. Are Wall Titans the same as Colossus Titans? What powers do they have that the Colossus Titans do not? The term Colossal or Colossus Titan refers to a very big Titan. The Colossus in the name is not used as a noun but as an adjective, at least in the original Japanese language. This is why many of these Titan shifters have been referred to with the same names in Paradise and Marley. Even though the majority of the show takes place in a world where the people of Paradise are in the dark about the existence of Marley or humanity outside the walls. The Wall Titans are colossal because they are 50 meters tall, which makes them tower over the average Titan Shifter by a long shot. The Colossal Titan Shifter has the same name because it is 60 meters tall, making it capable of looking over the walls. Both types of Titans are very similar when it comes to appearance, except for the 10 meter difference in their heights. The major difference between the two groups would be that the Colossal Titan is a Shifter and, as a result, can be wielded by an intelligent and emotional human. The Wall Titans are pure Titans, so they can never be wielded by a human. However, both 
Titans release a lot of steam, which is a characteristic of not just these Titans, but enormous Titans in general. Rod Rice's Titan, the Wall Titans, and Armin and Berthold's Colossal Titan release generous amounts of steam and heat. In fact, the size of the Titans make them prone to high metabolic activities, which is why exposed Titan skin, muscle, or blood releases steam. Unlike most of the other shifters, however, the Colossal Titans and the Wall Titans do not come with skin, which makes their exposed body release steam and heat. The greater the size, the hotter the Titan. How many wall titans are there in Attack on Titan? How far did they succeed with the rumbling? We never get an accurate estimate of the number of wall titans in the story. Marley was told that there would be tens of millions of wall titans if Paradis ever began the rumbling, but they were only fed this information as the king wanted to scare them into not retaliating. The original number should be somewhere around 100,000. YouTubers have tried to calculate the numbers and while some have come up with answers within the 200,000 range, others have stated that there should be around 500,000 wall titans. The issue is that we know how tall the walls are, but we do not have an estimation of their width and the size of the area it encompasses. 500,000 seems to be a better estimate because of the scale of the rumbling. They have overwhelming numbers and with their resistant heat generating bodies and enormous heights, even anti-titan artillery cannot do much. It might have succeeded against a couple of such wall titans, but never against an entire army of them. Using their sheer size, might, and resistance to wall titans flatten a whopping majority of the world, taking out 80% of the world's population. Their steaming body caused ships to explode and made it nigh impossible for the average person to get close. Most interestingly, they were shown to be able to swim, which is something we have never seen for any other Titan. It is possible that the average Titan shifter can swim if its wielder can. We never got to see it for the first three seasons as the characters spent their lives away from the sea. Pure Titans may also not be able to swim since it is a learned skill, however, the wall Titans were directly controlled by Eren, which which meant that he had control over the action of the Wall Titans. Without Eren being the coordinate, they might not have been able to swim, generate steam when and where necessary, and operate strategically. They might have run amok to kill and eat people instead of partaking in an organized rumbling. Why did the Wall Titans not revert to their human forms after the power of the Titans died out? The Titan Shifters can shift in and out of their human forms. Pure Titans are different because although they were previously humans, they did not retain their intelligence as Titans and cannot shift back into humans. They lose their sentience almost completely. The Wall Titans are similar to the latter, but with one major difference, they do not seem to be former humans who were turned into Colossus Titans. We have witnessed that injecting Titan Serum into a subject of Ymir turns them into the the average pure titan. DNA of a different type of titan shifter can also affect the transformation, which is why Falco, despite inheriting the jaw titan, can fly due to Zeke being the beast titan and his spinal fluid being used to turn Falco into a titan. This would theoretically make it possible for a person to acquire traits of a colossal titan if any serum from a wielder of a colossal titan enters their network. However, Falco could transform into a winged titan because he had retained his intelligence as a titan shifter. The wall titans do not, which makes it impossible for them to learn to acquire the traits of the Colossal Titan. This leaves us with one explanation and that is the fact that the Wall Titans were created from scratch for a singular purpose. Ymir Fritz can make Titans once she has been given the command. She creates shifters and pure Titans because the Titan Serum and Transformative Self-Harm Act give her the necessary push. She does not need this push when the wielder of the Founding Titan gives her the command to create an unintelligent Colossal Titan and then uses her powers to harden them, thus creating the Walls. This this is also why after the power of the titans ceases to exist, we never see the wall titans revert back to their human forms unlike the pure titans and age is not a factor here, since your human form essentially ceases to exist once you become a pure titan, which is why the reason behind Freckles Ymir reappearing in her younger human form despite being 60 years old. But there's a counter argument to this, if the wall titans were not formally humans, why do they die when the nape is sliced? The primary reason why any titan or shifter dies when the nape is sliced is because it is the connection connection of the human to their titan. The said connection getting severed prevents any regeneration. Sometime during the Battle of Heaven and Earth, Ymir summoned the past wielders of many titan shifters into the year 854, and that is the time of the battle. Due to her access to the path, she could do almost anything as long as it revolved around the control of a subject of Ymir. The wielders of these titan shifters were also dead in the present time, so she probably materialized their souls from the past. Something similar could have happened in the case of the wall titans where Carl Fritz 
Fritz and Ymir used previously dead Eldians to create the Wall Titans. Carl Fritz would not have sacrificed Eldians who were alive since the creation of the Walls took place to protect those in Paradise. The Wall Titans, being older Eldians who had seemingly died, would also explain why these Titans did not revert to their human forms after the Source was destroyed because their human forms were long dead. Marvelous Verdict The Wall Titans are the scariest titans in the story because we spend the majority of our time knowing they exist while being oblivious to why and how there are titans within the walls. The show also establishes early on that the colossal titan is extremely dangerous, so the idea that hundreds of thousands of its variant exists within the walls is unnerving. While we experience these feelings during the first half of the show where we are made to believe that the titans are the enemies of humanity, the narrative flips after the time skip where we have less to fear while the Marleans and the outside world begin to look at these very titans from our lens. And with that, today's video comes to an end. Do you think the Wall Titans are humans, or do you believe that the Ymir Fritz was made to create them for the sole purpose of building the walls? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and comment on this video. Till then, goodbye and have a nice one.